Well, hello and welcome to another one of Professional Advisors Advisor Champion video interviews. I'm Julian Marr, editor of Professional Advisor, and today I'm talking with Lawrence Cook, Director of Marketing and Business Development at Thesis Asset Management. Hello, Lawrence. Good morning. Start with our usual question, uh, two-parter. What do you see as the best and worst case scenarios for the future of financial advice in this country? Gosh, nice, yeah. easy one. Yeah, easy one to kick off. Thank you, Julian. Um, I think the best case is to, on the one hand, to see more capital coming in to the business, so I, I, into the industry. So I think the more and more uh, it's recognised the value of financial advice as the product, yep. as opposed to the end product that gets possibly bought by the by the client, the more and more of that is recognised, I think we'll see more capital coming to the business. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be a very, very positive thing, because as we know, there's a, a lack of capacity, and it, that leads to the whale well-trailed advice gap. Yeah. So I think best case, if we saw more capital coming into the market, that would be that would be a big, big plus. And allied to that, advisors' own confidence in the value of financial advice and financial planning. Mm -hmm. um, and the more confidence we see in that, as opposed to um, the what we've left behind, which is selling a product, the better. Yeah. Um, and turning to your other point, worst case. Yep. Um, We've had scandals before, haven't we? Which has not been necessarily the sole preserve of financial advisors, the whole financial industry, yeah. let me say. Um, we have a lot of people now looking at their defined benefit pension schemes, and mm. we know a lot of those clients need advice. And in many situations, the advice to transfer out of a final salary scheme can be very good advice. You know, we see transfer values of 30, 40 times the actual pension um, and for many clients it's a viable option to transfer out uh, and when done well that adds tremendous value to, to the client um, so I what I think many of us are concerned about is where DB transfers where the advice is not done well yeah. and if we don't get that right um, then we will rue the day in years to come yes I felt there was a buck coming away you were talking there but uh, more of a personal question how did you get into financial services and if you know an alternative for the universe, what would you be doing if you hadn't? Oh crikey, um, like many people I think, uh, my generation, um, Generation X, I fell into financial services mm -hmm. and it's been very good to me and I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, but growing up in Plymouth, the Royal Navy town, I guess if I hadn't been in financial services I'd have been, well the Marines at 5 foot 8 and 11 stone wasn't an option clearly, yeah. Julian, so uh, the Royal Navy probably beckoned but um, it wasn't to be. It wasn't to be, we weren't press ganged. No. From your experiences then, the last 20, 30 years, mm. what do you believe advisors are doing well? What could they be doing better? Oh, crikey, what they're doing well, I think we've seen a fantastic development in professionalism and allied to that, a development of propositions that really make a difference to clients' mm -hmm. lives. Whereas I think um, those of us that were in, in the broadest sense in financial services 20, 30 years ago, um, it was all about product. That product, there is still a product, but the product is now advice. Yeah. And I think the, uh, the development of financial planning, um, which I put as a sort of higher level above financial advice, has really come on leaps and bounds, and that's been fantastic for clients. Um, and the more and more advisors become confident about the value of that, mm -hmm. not the end product, the better the situation will be in. What would be your, that's a better business question, what's your top tip for advisors to help them run a better business? That's always a dangerous one, isn't it? Because yeah. people might say, well, focus on running your own business. But since you mm -hmm. asked me, yep. um, I think it goes back to the, to the previous point. I think where we see advisors thriving and their business developing, um, and indeed there are many of those, it's about the confidence to understand where the value lies. The value does not lie in administration or paperwork. Right. The value lies in making a difference for clients' lives, which sounds rather trite, and, uh, but fundamentally, the best financial advisors really make a difference by focusing on the strategic issues for clients, making them think and prioritise the aspects of their life that are financially dependent, which sadly are many, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's, a, that's a big, big positive. Um, so where advisors can strip out the things that are not adding value, mm -hmm. Um, as perceived by the client, the better. So financial planning firms that are recognising that and outsourcing, delegating, whatever you might call it, 
uh, that part of the process um, that isn't that core value, I think, um, are best place to thrive in, thrive in the future. Okay. Value for money, obviously mm. a massive issue, I almost can't follow on from that. How would you define that in the context of financial advice? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, clearly from the regulator's point of view, you know, we talk about costs of the retail investment products. That's important, of course it is. Um, but actually when you talk to financial planners and clients, they don't talk about um, OCFs, uh, they don't talk about multi-asset portfolios. What they talk about are uh, reassurance, um, confidence to make decisions, to prioritise, to make the best of my financial situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the flip side, avoid making really costly bad mistakes. And I think a financial planner um, who does that for his client is really delivering. Yeah. Well, I've got you on the subject and mm. uh, as working for an asset manager, how would you explain risk to someone who doesn't work in financial services? Yes, it's easy to fall into the trap of industry jargon, isn't it, mm -hmm. when talking about risk. And the word risk has all sorts of connotations. So I, I think I would take it out of financial services and ask that person um, to think about any decision they make in their life, uh, whether it's to do or not to do something, mm -hmm. the um, likelihood of them achieving what they want to do. So whether that's education, career, buying a house, um, doing nothing is a risk and doing something is a risk. And once someone understands that doing nothing is also a risk, mm -hmm. I think then there's a more rational, objective uh, discussion to be had. Okay. One of my favorite questions, if you were head of FCA for a day, what would you do? What would be the first thing you did? Oh gosh, yeah. It's probably unlikely to happen, but let's, let's say- it Never say never. Never say never. Um, maybe I should brush up the CV. But uh, I think, going back to something I mentioned before on the advice gap, mm -hmm. I think I would set up a review by the FCA um, to think about how they can contribute to encouraging greater capacity in the financial advice sector. Uh, because if we look at um, independent advice and advice more generally, it would probably be safe to say there's not been a significant widening mm -hmm. of, uh, um, of capacity in the industry. So creating a framework that encourages firms to take on more people, to invest for the future, and for people to think, actually, I want to be in that industry, that would be a big contribution that the FCA could make. Okay. We call this, these videos advisor champions. Can you pick a character from history or uh, fiction that you would think would be the ideal advisor champion? Um, well, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm gonna say Louis Theroux. Right. Uh, so he's, he's not historical yet, bless no. him. Um, but the reason why I picked Louis, I don't know if you've seen some of his programs, He's got a fantastic ability um, to really focus on the individual. And those advisors and um, planners that I've worked with in the past, they have a fantastic ability to um, focus on the individual, um, focus on the client to really get them to open up. And if, if we could capture the essence of what Louis does when he speaks to people, people he's never met before, mm -hmm. and they open up and tell him everything about their lives, it's because he does it with intelligence and curiosity and a real focus. So I think um, we can learn a lot from those, those characteristics that Louis uh, represents. Good answer, thank you. Final question then, how do you think the advice sector itself can best go about being its own champion? Yes, well I think um, at a professional body level, the likes of Keith Richards at the PFS doing a great job um, representing um, uh, the profession with uh, consumer groups, the regulator, the government, doing a great job. I think what IFAs can do is focus on community. Uh, I, I don't mean just necessarily physical community, that could be an online community mm -hmm. to promote the value of advice. Um, so that could be through local um, groups, as I say, or online, and maybe doing, uh, being prepared to give more pro bono guidance uh, to really engage with the local community, and I think that could have a big, big difference. If one imagines the number of advisors we have in the country, in the country uh, a significant number contributing more in that way could have a big, big effect at ground level. Excellent. Well, Lawrence, thank you very much for talking for thank And you, thank man. you very much for watching. Please do look out for further Advisor Champion videos in due course.